Want to control your entire Apple Smart Home from your fingertips? Let's take a look at this cool Smart Home app that turns any iPad into the ultimate wall-mounted or coffee table control system. Whether you want to adjust a the thermostat, turn on the lights, check the weather in your schedule, or monitor temperature and humidity, the Wallflower app from Next Big Thing has you covered. Stick around and find out how to grab the levers of power for your smart home. Wallflower is an app designed to run full screen on your iPad and provide an at-a-glance status and information board for your smart home. From one easy-to-read screen, you can see the time of day, the current weather, and status of key smart home devices. With a simple tap, you can bring up a QR code that makes it easy for guests to sign in to your Wi-Fi network, keeping it safe and secure. With just one touch, you can bring up expanded controls for all the lights in a room and easily turn them on and off or adjust dimming levels and even color tone. Wallflower is not intended to replace the Apple Home app or other third-party home user interfaces that have lots of options and commands for both using and also configuring your smart home. Enough chatter. Like any software, it's easier for me to show you than tell you. Let's take a look at the Wallflower app and, and see exactly what it can do. So I will launch Wallflower 2. Now you notice Right away, there's a couple of things that can be set. It configure Wallflower to control all the devices in a room or select an individual device. You can set the location, let's do that. So I'm gonna set the location for weather and I'm just gonna tell it I'm at uh, one Apple Park, Cupertino, California. And we'll go ahead and set that. And I can allow, there's our weather now. Actually, the rain has cleared up quite a bit. I will, I'm not in Cupertino, but I'm near Cupertino. And where is this iPad located? So in the home ER, we're gonna go ahead and put it into the room called lab. So the, that will be the current room that always gets displayed. If you take a look here, you can see for weather, it's getting a, a quick summary with some icons, the temperature and the weather summary. If we click on it, we'll get a full screen that shows our current location, a curve of the existing weather and summary for the temperature, the dew point, current wind in miles per hour, mercury pressure, and visibility. And for each of these screens, you just hit the X in the upper left there, and that takes you back to the main screen. And you see there's a warning that we're not plugged in. And since this is going to be running continuously, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and plug in power so that uh, it'll run and be continuously plugged in. And now the warning has gone away. One of the fun things we can do is go right up here to edit. And here we see the main sections of the screen with buttons to configure each section. The clock display style, the weather and calendar, the current room and devices in that room, overall configuration issues, which really means status or show and hide. For example, if we go in here, we can hide whether the error about not being plugged in is displayed. We can hide whether it detects if a network is connected or not, whether we're on cellular, whether the battery is low, etc. So I'm going to go into edit and go to this section to add a guest Wi-Fi button. Now I'll come in here and add the name of the network. And of course, add the password needed to sign into the network. And click close. Now anyone that visits your network or home can just tap here on the join guest Wi-Fi and a QR code will be displayed. Let's go ahead, go into settings, guest Wi-Fi, and I can turn off display password on screen. 
So now when you click tap to join guest Wi-Fi, it shows the name of the network, but not the password. Now again, in edit and settings, we can configure the style of the clock. If you would prefer a digital clock, I like the analog, but let's change it to a different color. We'll change it to green and you can control whether that date there is on or off. So we'll go ahead and change the color. Back on the main screen, in the right hand side, you see the current room that's selected and a quick summary of the devices, the any climate or ventilation and cooling devices, lights and general devices, sensors and smart plugs. And then finally, this bottom area under the bar is where a graph will be generated of the temperature, the uh, believe that's a humidity or dew point, and the lighting light level in lux, a measure of brightness, will be displayed over time. We can click directly on climate and change the thermostat. This gives us a nice full screen display where with a slider we can go ahead and raise or lower the desired temperature. Let's go ahead and set that to 70 Fahrenheit. We can control the temperature off, heat, cool, or auto. Similarly for lights, we can quickly drill down and see all of our lights. We have something called T lamps and a Lumaris light. We can click on that and turn it on or off. You'll notice the little icon went from an outline to filled in as I turn it off it becomes an outline again. If I change the dimming level here by clicking on it, that is also reflected back here in the icon. Full on is a brighter filled in, whereas if I turn the brightness way down and go back, it's filled in but in much paler gray shade, indicating it's not on at full. In the device section, you can see various devices. And again, you can simply click on the icon, to, in this case, to turn a printer on I can go back to the main display and again I see that device I turned on is now indicated as being on, the other devices are off. If you click on the room name, you can quickly switch to any other room. So if I switch, for example, to the kitchen, I can see a display of the lights in the kitchen. I can click the up and down arrow here to expand that and see which lights are currently on or off in the kitchen. I can go back here and switch to another room. So it's really easy to navigate between the rooms, not just the room that you're in. And at any time you can expand the list of devices to see the full device name and status. Thank you so much for watching this video. You are awesome. If you're enjoying this video and wanna see more, toggle the subscribe button, automate the bell icon, and then get started on your next smart home project. Now, if you're going to use Wallflower, it's time to think about how you wanna physically access it. A popular choice is to mount it to the wall so it's always on, always available to use. This is really great for rooms with a lot of different lighting options. Instead of having long rows of dimmers and switches on the wall everywhere, a single iPad mini or full-size iPad provides easy access. There are a wide range of professional iPad mounting solutions available Available that include permanent anti-theft mounting or convenient magnetic mounts. So you can grab the iPad from the wall, hold it in your hand, and take it with you as you sit down in your comfy chair to watch a movie or stream the latest Do It For Me Solutions YouTube video. These pro mounts can get pricey, so take a look at some of the simpler mounting kits or go full DIY building your own with a 3D printed wall mount or good old woodworking skills. For many of us, security against theft or misuse isn't a problem, and that makes mounting the iPad much simpler. Don't get hung up, sorry, bad pun, on only mounting it to the wall. This app is perfect for casual use as an iPad that stays on a coffee table, side table, or even kitchen countertop. Just plan ahead for power or charging as a dead iPad is not just useless, but quite frustrating. Using an iPad for smart home control also has some disadvantages, of course. First and foremost, iPads are affordable, but not cheap. A great thing about using an iPad for home control is that you can run other apps too. Control your music with Apple Music, Spotify, Sonos, or any other music or entertainment app. The biggest disadvantage of using your iPad is also its biggest strength. 
If you wall mount your iPad and enjoy using it to control your HomeKit home, you'll probably end up buying another iPad just to use as a regular iPad sooner or later. So what do you think? If you own an iPad, will you be considering mounting it to the wall? Has this got you interested in buying an iPad for better smart home control? I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below. As you build out your smart home, it's important to understand how the new matter standard fits in. Before you buy your next smart home device, watch this video first.